Hey gang, what's going on? Hope everybody's doing good out there today and welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Today we're going to be talking about how much money you should spend on a fishing rod. I'm going to give you guys sort of my advice and opinion on after, you know, using and buying fishing rods myself for 50 years. Might help you guys out a little bit. And real quick before we get started here, just sort of remind you guys the uh, picture of the sleeper gill that you see in the uh, thumbnail here. Um, if you guys didn't see the video uh, we did yesterday, or just day before yesterday, uh, Bait Works in here in Springfield has got a giant selection of the sleeper gill. I'll include the uh, sleeper gill link in the description if you use that. It's a good way to help the channel. And also, as usual, please check out our View Product Shopping tab when you click on the video. Uh, much appreciated there. Okay, guys, fishing rods. I, You know, one of the things that, you know, there's about a dozen topics that I get here on the channel as far as people dropping comments and people asking questions. And one of them is, um, it's always about rod and reels. We're going to do reels probably in, a, in another video, but today I wanted to talk specifically about rods and how much money you should spend on your fishing rod. Because I, I've been the, the whole gamut of it, guys. I started out, you know, back when I was mowing lawns as a teenager, and I had just the <clears throat> whatever I could afford, not very good rods. And I've had, you know, sponsorships with different rod companies over the years. I bought a lot of rods. You know, I've been partnered with companies, so I've had a chance to use a lot of fishing rods um, in correlation with how much they cost. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you guys, the thing about fishing rods is the old adage, you get what you pay for. It's probably not truer in any other part of fishing than it is fishing rods. Fishing rods, the only thing I can really equate them to as far as the price point for what you're getting would be similar to a golf club. If you guys, you know, do much golfing um, it's all about feel you can feel how much your rod costs in your hands basically there's two different ways to determine this it's feel and then it's analyzing the components that you have on a rod here's what determines the price of a rod more than anything else it's the components used to build the rod because you take you know a high-end fishing rod and the components used to, you know, have the real seat made, you know, have the blanks, have the guides, all that type of stuff. Um, the actual materials involved in putting that rod together, they're simply better components. It's the same with if you buy a, you know, a, a Ferrari versus some little economy car. It's, it's all about the components. Um, and the second thing that goes along with that is there's an element of feel. Now, you have an element of feel that is more comparable and uh in rods as far as the price difference in other words some rods can feel really good in your hands that cost you know 150 dollars and some rods you can't tell a lot of difference in a 400 or 500 dollar rod as far as how they feel they both feel good again the difference is in the components com combined with the fear so excuse me com combined with the uh, feel of it so the point is is what what is a good price point to spend on a rod if it, a lot of it, it back it goes back to budget it's just about what you can afford but one of the things i would advise guys above anything else in fishing is try to if, if you're in the market to purchase a rod or you're trying to get your your rod set up you know lined out for the future it will it will benefit you in the long term if you can save your money up a little bit and buy a higher quality rod because not only a higher quality rod is gonna, it's gonna be an extension of your hand and it's gonna feel better, but it's also gonna last longer. Uh, a high quality rod will simply, it's, it's just, simply has got a longer shelf life on it because again, the components and also the blank composition of them will hold their positions better. If you have a, a low end rod, it will actually take a bend. Like you can set it up in the corner of your room and eventually that rod's gonna take a bend. So, um, like I said, you get what you pay for. Try to save up and get the get the best rod that you can buy. In the long term, it's going to be probably a better investment than trying to buy something cheap. Um, my advice, I, out of all the ones out there, you guys know I'm partnered with Mega Bass. The Mega Bass Aroshi Double X series is, to my opinion, as far as when you look at value, components, everything along there, I've never seen a better rod than that. Uh, you know than the Mega Bass Hiroshi Double X. You know, there's it's just a really good rod. It's high quality. You know, it's in the ballpark of a lot of other you know higher end rods. 
lasts you a long time, feels great, a lot of different actions on it. It's just a really good model to, to choose. But ultimately, guys, you just have to let your budget, you know, I'm not I'm not sitting here telling you you need to go spend a fortune on a rod. I'm just, what I'm trying to tell tell you is if you've, if, if you've got, say you've got X amount of dollars to spend on a rod and you may feel that you can get two rods for, you know, the same price as one rod, it will be better for you to go for the one rod, the better rod. Try to find a rod that has multiple purposes. You can say, for example, you can get a, a 7.2 medium heavy action like that Mega Bass Perfect Pitch, and it's a versatile rod that will allow you to do a ton of different things on it. You can throw a spinner bait, a topwater, a crankbait, or you can pitch and flip a jig, you can throw a worm on it. If you pick out a rod that has multiple applications, again, that will save you money um, you know, from what you need. We, we've done this before. I, I told you before, I think you can get away with three rods. I think you can get away with a flipping stick, you know, a 7.2 medium heavy and a spinning rod for most every application out there. It may not be perfect, but it will be serviceable. But my advice, guys, is, um, like I said, try to try to get the best rod that you can afford. It's just going to feel better. It's going to be more fun to fish with. It's going to last longer. Everything about it's going to be better. And I'm like I said, I'm not telling anybody to go out there and try to spend a fortune or try to get out of their budget. I'm just saying in the long term, you'll be better off um, putting a little bit more of an investment in your rods. Um, it'll just pay off in a lot of different ways. So price point, guys, I'm, you're, you know, let's, let's finish up with the price point here. I think that you're looking, if you, in order to get from what I've seen in the rod market, when you, in order to get a rod that has really quality components and the entire rod is put together real well, you're looking at around two to four hundred and fifty dollars two two hundred dollars to four hundred and fifty dollars in that range there if you you know there are some rods that are more over five hundred but there's so many out there that are good between two hundred and and five hundred that will do everything you need to do. I think that once you start getting you know below say one hundred and fifty dollars for sure if you start to get in that hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range you're gonna see a noticeable difference in the quality of construction and how that rod feels in your hand. So that would be my advice, guys. Try to um, you know, reduce the number of rods you're using and try to go for quality over quantity. I think you're gonna be a lot more happy with that. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Much appreciated. We'll talk later.